Hi, everybody, and welcome to another CaliCube roundtable with WordLift. And today we've got Bea from WordLift and we've got Theodora, not from WordLift, but a great WordLift friend. And we're going to be talking about SEO and knowledge graph, knowledge graph based chatbots. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Hello, and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Bea and Theodora. That's Wonderful great. To have you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go through a really quick introduction uh, for the, the entire series. Welcome, everybody. This is the monthly double bill where we do uh, CaliCube Tuesdays, normal CaliCube Tuesdays with Tom Shapiro today, and then followed by a really geeky knowledge entity, knowledge graph entity based SEO um, webinar with. Wordlift, which is absolutely delightful. And before we start, just a quick word of support for Ukraine. We have friends in Ukraine who are fighting for their freedom, and it's really important to remember them. These photos are all new from last week. Um, the, the, the people that we know and love who are fighting for their freedom in uh, Ukraine from the left, they're the first, my first Ukrainian friend, Alexander, Pippa, Sasha from a group in the 90s, Anton, who's behind the scenes today, Alessia and Eugene, the lawyer friend of mine, who's been helping me out with the legal side of things and is currently still working despite the war, as is Anton. Incredible courage, stand with Ukraine, do support them, please support them again and again and again. They're fighting for their freedom, but I think they're also fighting ultimately for our freedom. On to something less serious, more fun, is the CaliCube Tuesday's 100th episode is next week. Uh, WordLift have been here since the very beginning. They've supported us throughout the entire series, and we do thank them for that. And we're going to have a big celebration with a 100th birthday uh, cake with those two delightful characters. And we're going to have a competition between now and then, and that is to choose your favorite knowledge nugget to win a bag of swag for that knowledge nugget from Ahrefs. So if we go to the next slide, we'll see all of the wonderful guests we had in 2020 and 2021. Any knowledge nugget, anything any of these people said during any of the 99 episodes that we've already had that you think was incredibly insightful, you pick it and you can win a bag of swag from Ahrefs if you submit it before Sunday. The rules are on the next screen and the rules are really simple. You watch or you pick the episode or the nugget from the episode that you like the most, you add a comment on that episode on YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook Live on or before March the 13th. In your comment, include the timestamp and explain why it is your favorite knowledge nugget and tag the speaker who spoke the knowledge nugget because not only will the person who suggests the knowledge nugget win the bag of swag, but the speaker who spoke the knowledge nugget will win a bag of swag too. And that includes potentially Teodora if we can now come back to the full screen, because Theodora has been on CaliCube Tuesdays, so it may be one of your knowledge nuggets that wins the bag of swag, in which case you get a bag of swag to your home in a couple of weeks' time. How does that feel, Theodora? You haven't won yet, though. It feels like a classic rhetorical approach. <laughs> oh, no. And straight into the uh, deep thinking intellectual side of the world with Theodora. I do love the way you talk, the way you think and the way you express everything you know. Bea, I've just met you, you're delightful. Can you just give us a quick rundown of what you do at WordLift? Yeah, uh, I started out uh, uh, working uh, with Andrea and the guys at WordLift like uh, six years ago. Uh, I started as junior uh, PM, and then I moved forward uh, by going more in, deep, in depth with uh, SEO. And I am now an SEO strategist, and uh, I also like to experiment with knowledge graphs. And uh, right. that is uh, why I'm here. And you're the person who's driven this new experiment with a knowledge graph based chatbot for one yeah. of your clients. And it's incredibly exciting. What I do love about what you guys do is you throw yourself in, yourselves into these new ideas to try it out and see what happens. As long as it's based on a knowledge graph, you guys are game. Is that a fair comment? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's why CaliCube loves WordLift. And CaliCube also loves Teodora. Tell us a little bit about why we love you so much, Teodora. Because I'm brutally honest. <laughs> that That's the simple fact. Easy answer, absolutely true, brutally honest, incredibly intelligent and insightful. I loved your episode. I remember it incredibly clearly. So 
let's get back to today. You're going to start the day with a presentation that's going to introduce us to the concept through Little Miss Sunshine. And I've seen the slides and they're delightful. Please take it away, Theodora. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, first, I want to thank Bea for the inspiration. Uh, her slides inspired me to do that. I was not going to share slides, but here I am uh, feeling like we need more human, more fun and more deep connection when it comes to chatbots. And it's cool that Bea is fighting on the first line with clients when she's doing the chatbots for them because we just um, exited the era where people were uh, thinking, okay, why do I need a website? And then why do I need structured data? And now they need a chatbot and they don't know it. But let's get a buy-in with my slides. <laughs> This Little Miss Sunshine, and um, it's a great movie, award-winning. I love it. The, the, the reason I put it here is because it totally twists the idea of marketing. And um, actually, it twists the idea of meaning-making and such a twist we need in marketing, especially in digital marketing, which we try, try to marry with structured data. Um, I'll be quick because I want to hear the results and stuff. So I have what, why, and how. The how is for Bea and WordLift always. The how of structured data is there. I have what from content to knowledge and then why from push to pull. Mm. These are concepts I want us to be clear about and uh, I'm happy the people from the field and we are talking more about um, knowledge, not so much about content. Why? Because we have these new librarians. And <clears throat> when I was preparing for, for, for the uh, chat today, I was thinking a chatbot is a specific case of a human machine interaction and digital marketing, content marketing, whatever marketing is a special case for communication. And if we go into these depths, we will be able to extract distilled insights so that we can act smarter. So new librarians, this is uh, the images from a paper. Um, it is a paper that explores how a librarian, a robot librarian finds a book. So we have that. Uh, there will be a natural language query, uh, a natural language sentence, then it will be transformed into a query, and then it needs to be transformed into actions where he will go and pick the book and grasp it. So think about that communication scenario. Um, chatbots, your kid's doll. This is a Barbie, which is talking. And uh, there are ethical implications here. So if we, we if we can feed a chatbot, we'll feed Barbie too. Um, uh, the question is, what knowledge will will we we feed Barbie? Are we going to <clears throat> push ads, or will allow kids to pull knowledge? Our local stores assistant is also a kind of a chatbot. Our fridge. So there are a lot of reasons to turn your website content into structured data. And feeding your chatbot, you'll be able to feed other data fed agents, like the hologram in this uh, image. Uh, the, uh, also, the hologram or this uh, face, scared face, or I don't know, curious, is the marketing specialist who's trying to answer questions. So why frustrate our people? and not give them a cool database to serve clients on their behalf. This is already done. There's uh, academic research in the area, and I think Andrea of WordLift is part of it, but I'm not sure. It's, the, um, it's boring. I'm not going to read this out. I just put it here when I share the slides. You can, uh, there's a link in the, in the slides, the idea is 
how you create content so that you can feed your chatbot. The people here have uh, highlighted the idea of creating data, not content. But I'm not differentiating a lot between these two. Why? Because there's this idea in marketing from push to pull. Rather than pushing ads, we allow the user to pull information. There is a term. Uh, it's not a term. It's just a wordplay. But there's research in the area which uh, talks about the idea of the need of very good databases that are backing the good marketing. You, you have to know your customer. You have to know your content. How do you do that? You clean your data and um, you have these good, nice libraries of information. So again, from push to pull, everybody has their phone. They're scanning a barcode and they want to know stuff about your products. They don't want to go on a website with um, uh, shiny objects on it. They want to know things. So we're going from content marketing or whatever we call this um, practice of churning out content into building large houses of knowledge with pillars. Um, why? Because we have this algorithmic audiences stuff going on. Uh, this is something I created with Andrea uh, for, for an article. And it's this is Jason Algo. This is our next marketing persona. And he eats data. And he, he has challenges too. And we need to be able to face his challenges. Uh, that's me, if you are wondering. Uh, I have some implications here, again, just to make us think about how big chatbots and knowledge-enabled marketing as a whole is. So we have the algorithmic um, environment, which is with limited data. This is the algorithms can reason over certain da uh, databases or certain data. We need to put more data. <clears throat> Whose data sets? That is, why not put data rather than content? Um, but these are intertwining. intertwining. Um, uh, heteroglossia, I'm sorry to be throwing this word here, but this is the concept that everybody calls one and the same thing with different words, with different language, through different paradigms. So how do we uh, join these together when we are creating a, a chatbot? And are we joining them or we can use structured data and some relations? Last orientation, the idea uh, of um, thinking about one and the same thing. We're not searching for the truth when, when it comes to defining a term for a chatbot. We're searching for what will serve the, the user. So for that to happen, and that's my last slide, uh, regarding the idea of selling and give me the money, we need a twist. There is no, There is a need for transactional communication, of course, but chatbots, given we give them the things, um, are have, have the potential to serve relational um, marketing. That is building relationships through giving exceptional service and being able to give the information the user needs when they need it. Thanks for what for listening. And that's it from me. I hope I didn't take a lot of Bear's time. Well, I think that was absolutely brilliant um, because it, it puts us in the right perspective for what's going on, what we're looking to do. And it's all about getting the user, in our case, the client, to the solution to their problem, to whatever it is we, we can offer them that will help them as efficiently as possible. And both Google and Bill Bing, excuse me, talk about getting the user to satisfaction as efficiently as possible. And Teodora makes a difference as always. Now, Bea, what do you have to say in reply to that? What did you think of Teodora's presentation? I think uh, most of the things 
it's what we thought of while uh, uh, working, actually doing the stuff uh, when we first uh, came across this idea. Uh, we said, yeah, uh, we do that. Uh, but of course, there are many preliminary uh, things to, to think about, uh, which I have not included in my presentation. Uh, there is the, the human fact, the, the personality that is intertwined mm. with, uh, with dialogue and uh, dialogue is intertwined with, uh, with knowledge graph. Uh, if we want to start from uh, our website, we must think uh, what content do I have in my website? Uh, is it well organized? Is it organized at all? Uh, in order to reuse that and in order to make uh, an economic difference there, uh, we absolutely have to organize content and see with what content type we have because depending on the content type that we have, we uh, shape the dialogue. The knowledge graph mm. shapes the dialogue that we want. If we want to have an uh, uh, informational chatbot, we need to have uh, informational content types. Uh, I'm thinking of about page, contact page, mm. uh, FAQs, and, uh, and that really uh, shapes and that is also intertwined with uh, our identity, with the company identity. So everything's at play here. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, sorry, that's a really good point. Sorry, I was actually thinking about the fact that Andrea has, has asked us, or we, we're working with Andrea and with you guys, uh, building an FAQ on CaliCube, and I'm going to have to organize that information, that data, so we can actually use it within the context of at least partially this experiment, and I'm realizing how much work there is to do, uh, how I tend to skip over the work and think, well, it doesn't really matter, and, and it does, and it takes time, but it's incredibly important, and once you've done it, you have a, such a solid basis for then extrapolating it into all these different uses that are incredibly powerful and incredibly relevant to users. And especially the part you said, having our personality in our content becomes even more important in this context. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. Teodora, one, one more word before we come back to Bea with her presentation. Uh, I was thinking how personality translates to the facets you see data from, the perspective. That is because mm. data is impartial and how do you put personality on data? You just uh, create the, the facets you think are important. But this is a crazy thought. If you just uh, allowed me to speak, this is why I shared it. No, I, I like that. It, it does it does make a difference. I mean, to bring it to, to, to the multifacetedness that Andrea talks about a great deal, um, the personality that one can bring with the multifacetedness is which of the pieces of data, which of the pieces of information do you push to the fore? Uh, and if I push the blue dog and yellow koala to the fore, that gives it one personality. If I push the punk folk musician to the fore, that's a different personality. If I put, push the author or the digital marketer, that's two different personalities. So which one I push to the fore in terms of the way I organize my data and the amount of data that I actually provide is phenomenally important. That's brilliant, Theodora. Ooh, have, have we just revolutionized the world? No, we haven't. Brilliant, wonderful. Bea, do you want to do you want to start your your um, slide deck yeah. for the practical implementation of all of this? Having heard from Theodora, the theoretical approach. Uh, uh, I think you see my yes my screen. Well, I'll also be uh, pretty uh, fast so that we can enjoy our chit chat after, which then <laughs> of dialogues plays a an important role within this speech as well. Uh, yeah, so let's start with the most generic uh, uh, topic, which is why chatbots? Why wanting a chatbot at all? Which now it seems to like uh, it's becoming a must have on, uh, on websites, uh, mostly because they make you deal with uh, support faster and 24 seven. So it has total accessibility and uh, other, one other important thing is the control over the customer journey. If you can place the chatbot on specific pages or on landing pages and then just drive the user um, by suggesting content where you want them to land uh, when searching for uh, specific uh, queries. So that is also a totally good point to have, uh, to have a chatbot. Uh, it's also becoming a, a really important uh, market in the digital marketing scene. 
And uh, of course, it is a means to have to generate opportunities, save time, while uh, of course always embedding quality in the process. There are so many uh, bad chatbots, like the ones that uh, you get stuck in the loop when you are searching for information. That it always says uh, you want to speak to a human, and it continues to bring up uh, information that we don't want, and we don't want that. Uh, and since we don't want that, that is. Uh, uh, why we want to use a knowledge uh, graph based one. Um, here is uh, some differences that uh, we might uh, have between a rule based uh, machine le learning uh, uh, based uh, chatbot and a knowledge graph based one. Um, a rule based needs to have a huge knowledge, knowledge base uh, with lengthy training to understand the intent. It has to speak over and over and over with the um, with interactions uh, and then it has to be manually updated when you want to update or to upload more data you have to do that manually uh, whereas a knowledge based one can reuse data from your website so that is the content we were talking about before um, uh, it it can interpret the user intent uh, with queries then uh, we can we will see it after um the the knowledge graph can retrieve the the uh, the closest uh faq for example piece of content and retrieve the information to to the user and uh, it has a dynamic storage and uh, it can retrieve information dynamically so there is no need for a uh, manual update and that is of course a huge save of save of time for for humans for example, like this is a, an example of a query. Uh, we can see that depending on the knowledge graph, uh, you can model the query as you want, and you can have uh, like uh, a mix and match of intents and uh, a mix and match of uh, information that you can uh, deliver to the user. That is, uh, of course, there is a preparatory work that you have to do on your knowledge graph in order to uh to write and uh, good queries and retrieve uh, good information but that is to give the general idea that uh, a knowledge graph can do that if it's well structured and then why knowledge graph uh, as we said before uh, knowledge graphs can be very powerful databases as they are in fact like uh a container of, of relationships. It is a container of uh, concepts and, uh, um, and it co also contains the relationships to these concepts, which uh, <laughs> opens up uh, a wide range of possibilities when it comes to chatbots. Uh, it's fast um, and uh, it's flexible and uh, it's totally scalable. So you can do a chatbot and uh, like, put it on one um, on one page and like test it out uh, and uh, make it ac accessible to a part of the knowledge uh, of the knowledge graph and um, and you can do a b testing you can do whatever you want with that uh, and this is how uh, this is I will be very very brief because it can be this can be boring but um, so basically in here uh, there are three main flows uh, we uh, push the content from the knowledge graph to the website with a graphql interface so uh, this is how we make available data from the knowledge graph to the website or to the back end then there is the semantic search um, on questions and answer or whatever your knowledge graph contains um, so the semantic search is how um, like FAQ content is made available uh, through targeted queries. Uh, so we manage the intent associated with those questions and we retrieve therefore the, the information from those questions, from, the, from those answers. Uh, and then there is the um, uh, how we give the user the information and we do that uh, with an external application uh, dialogue manager that then um, 
operates uh, from the knowledge graph uh, for the user to have the information uh, uh, ready. So this is a, like a, an example. Um, this is the, the search API um, on uh, how to retrieve information. Then we have uh, the, um, this comes from the, the knowledge graph. So we have uh, a question that is, uh, why should they get an EV? Why should they get an electric vehicle? So we, let's say the user types in the chat about this, uh, this question. And then we have in the knowledge graph an FAQ, which is structured with uh, the question, why buy an electric car? And then there is the answer. So the chatbot can understand that you are asking exactly that, but in another way. So that is how the um, uh, um, a knowledge graph based chatbot can retrieve and uh, um, understand the intent behind, the, behind the, the user question. And then uh, on the left, we have uh, an example of how we can portray that. So uh, lastly, uh, what about revenues? Uh, because yeah, uh, we see uh, we saw that uh, uh, chatbots can be useful, but uh, can they all also lead? Um, can they also bring uh, money? Uh, in a sort of way, they can. Um, they can be used for improving a lead generation strategy. Um, by controlling the customer journey and guiding the user to the information they're looking for, um, the users are more likely to leave like uh, contact details or um, that is how we have more qualified leads, uh, higher conversion rates. Um, whereas generally speaking, uh, a chatbot, if it's well uh, built and if it uh, retrieves the information that the users want to know. They are uh, they are increased the traffic and uh, the user engagement, and that is how um, while increasing traffic, uh, all other metrics are mo most likely to to increase as well. Um, so that is a general benefit of having uh, of having one on your website. So that that will be all, but of course it um, we can talk about uh, each point in our uh, chat. Brilliant, wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I was watching that and thinking, I really need to get to work on this. I mean, looking at chatbots in the traditional sense, I mean, Anton talks about them a lot, he loves them. Uh, what I found was it's very difficult to actually build a chatbot that makes sense and doesn't get you stuck in that loop or give you the wrong answer that sends you to the wrong place. And the idea of the knowledge graph, I mean, my website should contain the necessary information for my audience. And the knowledge graph contains that information, the chatbot becomes a way to represent that information to the user at their speed, at the time they need it. Uh, Theodora, your thoughts on that? I've, I've obviously just stated the obvious, but can you take the obvious and take it a bit further, please? You're very polite in asking for just the small things from me. I'll uh, turn on my giant head and say that, yes, uh, what you said, correct, the idea of get uh, giving the right information. For me, the question is how to sell chatbots to clients. Who? If I am to talk about something and to try to add value, this is the real thing because a chatbot um, is just the tip of the iceberg of getting your data right. And it's uh, I'm I feel strange trying to uh, persuade someone that a chatbot is a good thing, a knowledge-based chatbot, and that idea of what Bear said. Uh, the rule-based versus the, the, the knowledge graph-based. This idea of digital marketing as, do, as being first-party data publisher. Is this too far away from our topic? No, I mean, the, the idea of how do you actually get people on board, the, the people who make the decisions, and, mm. and, and that idea of saying, 
when it's rules based, I think you can explain it to people. And they go, I get that. I just write it all in and it all maps. And that's something we understand as humans, whoever we are. Um, and when you say it's a knowledge graph and the knowledge graph has a certain intelligence, let's say, uh, it becomes more difficult to understand and maybe less believable. Is that a problem you're seeing, Bea? Uh, I mean, there are some uh, mental resistance to that, uh, especially if the client is uh, big and already has built chatbots in the past or um, it has diversification and is using chatbots in some at some places and well uh yeah uh, that can be um but if you explain like uh, we built a knowledge graph for for our client and that was a means to use that it for to give it a, a second life let's say um so they understood the the value there but um yeah that is a right that oh, okay a good job. And, no it's, it's really difficult to convince people and what what seems a pity is that p the companies who already have all the information on their website and it's simply not accessible i mean the number of websites you go to and you're looking and you're going i don't really know where to go to find my information you've got the search box that isn't necessarily very intelligent uh, what's the advantage of the chatbot in that situation? Well, uh, first of all, it's a, a conversation based. So um, you engage in conversation and if the you build a very good dialogue, then uh, it becomes uh, preferable to the user to write down something uh, rather than actually looking for it. Uh, you let the bot do the, the searching. Um, that saves time. Uh, especially if you're looking for products or just uh, information and uh, you just type uh, the, the query you want is sort of a, uh, if you're in the right place, it can be a search engine. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a search engine with a kind of personal assistant running around yeah. trying to help you, which is absolutely delightful. Um, Teodoro, your thoughts on that? Oh, you don't have any. I, I was actually thinking about Wreck-It Ralph and the scene where they go up to the equivalent of Google and the little guy's running behind and he's he's trying to help them and he's actually suggesting things. And for me, that's the chatbot. They were presenting it as Google, but in fact, Google doesn't do that in the search concept context at least. And the idea of a chatbot is my little friend behind the desk, as you were saying, Teodora, with the library, going and looking for the books, but also suggesting actually you might want this. So it really is the librarian who knows the books and starts to get to know you and you develop a relationship. Is, is part of your reticence, Teodora, that you kind of feel that the machine relationship isn't as strong as the human relationship? I didn't understand the word reticence. Oh, um, your slight um, discomfort and <laughs> slight unwillingness to go the whole I, way and yeah. accept. Mm. I don't have a slight discomfort knowing that Andrea Volpini word lived is part of doing this. I mean, uh, this is why I'm here to be that humanistic part uh, of, of the right. talk about the chatbots, because it's important for teams to talk about this. And when we create content and what Bea said about the FAQs, it's so cool to think about that communication scenario where the user is going on the website or somewhere else and they're asking questions. And this, by the way, saves uh, people, uh, saves the organization money from, say, customer service and endless phone calls and saves the person uh, some strange uh, conversations that are not very knowledge enabled. That is, what, because so many people who are part of the organization are touch points for the user, they need to be empowered with knowledge. And not only people, but also the algorithmic parts of the organization. So you need to have a digital twin. Let's throw that word here too. And a chatbot can be the tiny twin of your digital twin, which is your website. Brilliant, wonderful. And and you were talking about different people within the organization uh, sharing knowledge or sharing information. One of the problems is that 
within organizations, especially large organizations, is it isn't necessarily shared with the same message and the information is fragmented. And they are, this is a way to bring it all together and make sure that the, the brand message is staying on tone at all times and the information is correct. Yeah, also, uh, if you have a knowledge graph based chat, but you are using the same tone of voice that you use on the website, rather than actually, uh, you can also do that, but um, building a conversation uh, it, um, for the chat, but maybe something that uh, brings a, a, another tone of voice. Um, whereas maybe you have thought of, uh, when building the website pages, you have thought of uh, you had something in mind, and you might have something else when writing the same text for a chatbot, and that may mm -hmm. be maybe maybe wrong because maybe uh, the users like the tone of voice you use in your your on your website, and that is a way to reuse uh, your content and also to revise your content. You may say, okay, that is a uh, that is not useful anymore. Let's update this, and uh, uh, or you understand that something is uh, is wrong with the tone of voice of, of your website. Then also chatbots bring on uh, a lot of uh, insights and uh, data uh, about uh, the users that land on your website. So that's also another really good point to to build one. Right, and the the idea that chatbot is basically just back and forth trying to get you to the point where you'll buy. Um, very functional. Uh, Teodori, empathy with human beings, is, is that something that would be missing necessarily? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, it won't be missing if you have done your homework by, as Beha said, organizing your knowledge. I was just thinking that uh, I'm mentioning Andre <laughs> again. He shared something um, about the, the fact that we're so far away uh, from singularity and as Bea was talking about the tone of voice and we may realize that this is not the tone of voice of our website we need I wanted to just share that we're so far away from user-centric content on the websites and this is again a challenge and an opportunity to just make our websites uh, the knowledge containers they need to be and a chat uh, working on a chatbot project is a great opportunity to start with this and empathy um it's that idea of the other and i'm very much into the concept that the other on the web is closely related to you creating linked data because linked data is sharing and this is where you put your perspective and you connect the dots. Why? Because there is another person who wants to walk on the paths you oh, build. Right. Oh, brilliant. And uh, talking of which, you were, you were talking about the, the, the content isn't necessarily um, user-friendly or isn't necessarily user -centric. well- User-centric. Uh, User-centric, excuse me. Mm -hmm get the vocabulary right with Teodora or you get, you, 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 you yeah, get the brutally I, honest. I allowed myself to say that because it's a very important word. User but you're hundred percent right. I was, yeah. I was fluffing my lines terribly badly there, but user centric. And what maybe we realize Bea, as soon as you start digging and building the knowledge graph and building a, a chatbot is to what extent we aren't user centric and at what, at what point we're being totally me, 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 I, me, mine, um, self-centered and writing content from our point of view. And the chatbot would throw that back as a straight away. Yeah, you can, while, uh, yeah you can do that while, yeah, uh, you can do that while building a chatbot and then you, you don't think of doing that because building a chatbot means putting the user first. That is something that you have to do. Otherwise you will get one of those, uh, one of those highly used chatbots that always gives you the same information. Uh, and also you have, uh, while we are building our, we are um, thinking of many different flows. Uh, and we are trying to get the user, if something is not clear to the chatbot, to make the user clarify, so to engage in dialogue, uh, that is also important. 
Um, and then, um, yeah, about what Dora said, uh, to have uh, user-centric content, I'm absolutely, uh, that is absolutely right. Right. And and kind of when faced with that, then you need to go back in and rewrite the content so it is more user-centric, which is valuable for the company throughout in terms of any kind of conversion method that they're using, be it through the web page or through the chatbot, which is delightful. Um, can you, with, with the chatbot you're currently building, can you describe some of the big issues you had or you have had so far without naming any names, obviously, but yeah. kind of what were the big challenges that the, the companies are actually facing? Yeah, uh, mostly um, speaking of the, the knowledge graph, um, I am still uh, revising it. That is uh, uh, one of the first uh, problems we en problems we encountered um, is that we need to uh, to feed the the knowledge graph with more data. Hmm. That was the the first thing that we we had to do um because the content that was there was uh, was not enough uh and we also are, are building uh since it's knowledge based uh, we don't only want to give the user the the information they want we also want to engage them in um, in conversation and in uh, uh, the commitment that the company uh, uh, has so um, it's important uh, once a conversation is over to ask if they want to uh, browse through the latest uh, articles about some topic. Uh, and that is why we broke the relationships uh, um, in form of categories inside the knowledge graph. That makes it so much easier because then we have uh, um, a list of uh, solid topics that are the core business of the of the company and uh, the, the the bot can ask the user do you want to know how our company engages in uh, uh, in sustainability or um, in uh, protecting the environment or whatever we have a list of topics that are uh, our relationships inside the knowledge graph Right. And and that gives you the opportunity to use the educational moments, which is to push things towards people when the the machine thinks that that will be helpful or interesting to them, for example, the yeah. sustainability that they wouldn't necessarily have looked for themselves, which is the idea of people also asking Google is saying, here's a good idea and yeah. pushing them towards where you want them to go, which is incredibly powerful. Um, so, Teodora, from from your perspective on on that, actually, building or writing the content so it serves the knowledge graph? What are the challenges there? Um, the challenges are under the umbrella of imagining the other person's needs and mm -hmm. the words and the concepts they use when trying to uh, find a solution for these needs and for these challenges. Um, to be honest, I see only opportunities when writing right. content for chatbots. No, really, uh, especially now that Bea also mentioned the idea of more data. Uh, being in need of more data is being in need of more content and more openness. Mm. That is if we talk about knowledge and um, there's, when we talk about knowledge um, in a linked data perspective, there's this generic knowledge, which you can get from the hippies, the LOD, the linked open data cloud. That is again, a selling point for the chatbot. If you, we can also um, connect it to other data, which you haven't, which you don't have. So you, you'll have your first party data, your uh, your organization's data, and then you will link it to the world's data and you'll get that entirety of content. And again, it's only opportun opportunities to reimagine marketing communication. Brilliant. And uh, Bea, talking about the world's data, how much have you been pulling in 
um, the open graph and other external data into what you've been building? Does, does it all have to be written yourself for your audience or can you pull a great deal in from the outside? Um, no, what we have is not sort of closed. Um, we are reusing the, the, the content uh, new and old from the website. And, uh, but because there is a little, um, uh, little uh, um, space to strive away from, uh, from the business guided, uh, the business guidelines. Uh, but yeah, uh, our entities uh, are linked to open vocabularies, so right. uh, we are still linked to the outside world. <laughs> <laughs> no, brilliant. No, incredibly funny because I've, I've actually been writing the FAQs and working with some of the Cali Cube team to write some FAQs. And every time I write or we write some answers to questions, I immediately have another 10 questions that I think, oh, that needs to be answered. That needs to be answered. Thinking about this chatbot idea and having a communication conversation where I'm bringing somebody, because what I'm trying to do is educate people about brand SERPs, which is something people don't think about. And they start with the question, what is a brand SERP? And then how do I lead them down to to lead them into the rabbit hole, the terribly, terribly deep and frightening rabbit hole that I'm in right now. And one of the, the questions or the problems I've had is every time I think of one question, I give that answer, I think of 10 more, and I can't see any possible way that I can keep up and answer all these questions. Uh, have you got any suggestions to help? You want... Oh, sorry, that... Sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, you want some suggestions to overcome your... Uh, not wanting to write more? It, it's such a massive task. I mean, um, no, what I that brings to mind for me what, is what with I machine do, learning. Sorry, go ahead. What go I ahead, do go ahead. is just um, um, prioritize and talk about the big stuff first and then about the branches and I create tables. And what, what you said about brand serves is... Um, just got me thinking how about your book and about the idea that people don't know. Yeah, I was going to ask: Is this a robot at the, on the top of your library? The oh, no, it, it, no, it, it's it's the clock from the bedroom that my daughter moved here because it goes tick 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 and it keeps me awake. And she's so kind; she took the battery out and put it up there so I didn't have to think uh -huh. about it. See, but there, no, was a, there was a question that you would have never thought about. No, I wouldn't. So, in my little internal knowledge graph for my little flat, that would yeah. be a question I wouldn't have thought about at all. But you, as a user of my mm -hmm. little environment from the outside is interested in it so yes and yeah. a lot of questions to be answered so the reason i'm saying this and sorry for touching your personal space but I do, i'm just fine. curious yeah is that um those people th there is this story where people saw a ship and they didn't know how to name it because they have never mm. seen that entity so how do you write content for people who don't know what they look what they are looking for and this is the greatest challenge and opportunity and the exciting thing about the web. Oh, that's, oh, that's brilliant. And writing content for people who don't know what they're looking for. And it does encapsulate exactly what I'm doing with brand search because people don't need know that they need it. Mm -hmm. And I need to lead them down the rabbit hole because it's down the rabbit hole that you see all the details that make it all worthwhile yeah. and give it the value. And so mm -hmm. this opportunity that I'm having with WordLift to build my chat box using my FAQ section that I'm building out desperately today is an incredible opportunity that might well change my life forever, which would be delightful. Um, and I'm now wondering why you didn't ask about the little, the little blue character here. That would have been much more intriguing for me. This, uh -huh. this little, I didn't this see it. Toy. Maybe, maybe my machine recognition is limited to robots. <laughs> and whereas I get attracted to the little fluffy toys, the cartoon characters. But back to the topic, I'm sorry. Like We'll get away from my personal space right now. Bea, um, can you take the conversation further? I've totally gone off track and I've got no idea of any questions to ask. <laughs> Say something intelligent to save my face. <laughs> well, um, um, uh, it's been great uh, sharing uh, this with, uh, with you. Um, that is, I, I feel like we talked about only the about the tip of the iceberg. I mean, this goes 
uh, so deep uh, down uh, uh, all the digital marketing topics like uh, uh, it brings on uh, SEO, it brings on uh, uh, link data, it's, uh, everything is actually connected in chatbots and uh, um, um, I feel like we, uh, we should speak for about uh, at least an hour more. Right now, exactly, you talk about kind of um, SEO and a lot of bosses or a lot of SEOs and digital marketers convince the bosses or the client to use schema markup to get the snippets in the SERP because it's visible and it's super sexy. And what they then do is just build this minimal schema markup to do that. Um, and yet, if you can get them to go that step further and start building that internal knowledge graph, you're saying the chatbot is the ultimate use of the knowledge graph because it goes way beyond that as well, doesn't it? Yeah, but it serves it perfectly uh, because the uh, I think the objective of building a uh, <laughs> building a a website is to bring over information to the users, and in order for them to be useful, they have to be user centric, as uh, Chadora said. And then, if we want to uh, make use of that information, then we can build a chatbot and put that content in the chatbot, so everything comes uh, at play. And uh, yeah. I really think it's a, it's a good use for, for a knowledge graph because it serves perfectly the users and uh, we can give the user the, the precise information that we want uh, mm. to give them. And, and kind of now thinking about the FAQ and the idea of the chatbot, I'm thinking, right, okay, I've got to change what I'm writing. I've got to answer different questions. I've got to answer it from the user's perspective. A, a pragmatic question just for me personally, do I have to go in and tag all the, all the word lift entities? in all my pages to make sure that this all functions? Uh, yeah. yeah you might do that. Uh, you might do that or just uh, bring over the uh, categories. I don't know if you have categories. Um, that works as well. Right, OK. This Working is how we it. did it. Oh, you use you, you put everything in categories and you yeah, use those we're as doing the that entities. Now. Yeah. You're not using the tags? Uh, we are using categories now. Okay, so for tags this are out use the case, no, 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 for this use case, this is how uh, the content from the client was built, uh, and so we are using what they currently have, in order not right. to having to rebuild all. And and right now with WordLift, in fact, I can substitute tagging individually the entities in the pages by using the WordPress tags and the WordPress categories to then leverage the entities and build the knowledge graph through. WordPress tagging and categories. Yeah, that's then correct. categories. Uh, yeah, then those categories will uh, become entities, actually. And the tags too. Yeah. In in my particular case, sorry, I'm being yeah. totally personal about this. Yeah. Just just checking how I need to move forward because once I've rewritten it all, I then need to tag it all, and I've got to figure this this out, and I'm working on it in my brain. Um, right. Okay. Um, Teodora, I'm, I'm I've got stuck again. Please, please. Save my face in, in your turn. Um, the nitty gritty of chatbots, maybe again, Thank you. This, <laughs> this idea, because you went into so much detail and that's only one person, it's only you. Imagine Bea talking to five digital marketing managers. Oh yeah. Thinking that, um, who think that, Edwards is just great and they don't need a chatbot. <laughs> I'm sorry to be a bit pessimistic <laughs> about the this idea of um, of making digital marketing people uh, who try to use analog legacy use chatbots. Did you just say analog legacy? Yeah, is this Can crazy? Can you explain that in more detail? I love the term. Uh, it's it's a concept wh uh, which I see. I mean, it's a phenomenon I see that people, there are even, um, people are using um, approaches which worked in the analog world and they're transferring these approaches to the digital world. And the digital world is a brave new world where we 
birth approaches. That is, the chatbot topic is not, um, there is no workflow. We're not uh, secure about this, but it's exciting and it works. A and no, we can't give uh, a, a pure definition of this and we can't answer all the questions, but we are uh, making the path, like in that Latin sentence, if there is no path, invent it. Hmm. Right. And uh, Andrea said the other day, and like he said, I've said it, he said it a few times. Andrea's got more mentions than, than I would possibly have imagined at the start of this show. Um, but he, he said to me, we're building the airplane as we're flying. Mm. Is that how you feel, Bea? Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and, and I think kind of people like us, we think that's incredibly exciting. But what I've seen with people uh, I've encouraged to work on, on all of this is they, they don't enjoy it. They find it frightening because they don't have that defined path. Um, are they just going to get left behind or can we bring them along? Um, or is it is the analog? I mean, for, for me, that would be the analog idea is saying I have a path. I do that this way. And I want to know where that path is going before I start on that path. Um, do you have to be adventurous to and build the plane as you're flying to do this, Bea? No, not necessarily. I mean, uh, for for instance, one can maybe start to uh, start walking uh, away from the safe side, but uh, if you don't want to, then we are not always sure of things uh, of where things will right. go. So which, which, that is a risk that we all take in any case. And, and well, that's another question. And sorry, Teodor, go ahead, Teodor. I'll remember my question. Off you go. Okay, because I won't remember what I thought. <laughs> but thank you. The definition of dialogue is creating a space, a new space mm. where nobody knows what will go, what will happen. The 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 entire thing about dialogue in the from a humanistic perspective not the dialogue box one is that two sides come together and then they don't know where they're going and this is the riches of dialogue yeah and it's what. a differentiating factor in marketing and i can prove this <laughs> right okay no, sorry, I was, I was going to say that that's actually that, that what is a dialogue definition is for the CaliCube team. That's a knowledge nugget that needs to be extracted from this and used as a knowledge nugget. And I personally am voting for that as the 99th episode knowledge nugget because that's genius. Um, Bea, do you want to add something? We're going to close up. I think I don't think we could have concluded what a chat yeah. that is, what is all about better than that. It's about dialogue taking us somewhere that nobody has ever been before to investigate something that potentially we didn't even know we wanted to get to the solution to the problem we didn't know we had. Ooh, that's good. Bea, can you give your conclusion to this wonderful yeah. show? Uh, chatbot work, chatbot uh, use cases is also about predicting. Uh, so that makes us uh, magicians as well uh, mm. because we have to predict what the user will, uh, will ask us. So that is also a cool side. I mean, all the dialogue, the conversation shape, uh, it's, um, that is also really cool. Oh, I love the term, the conversation shape. That's delightful because it, it gives it that idea of a dialogue taking us into a new universe with a new shape that we've never seen before. This is all getting terribly philosophical. Theodore, your closing comments. Um, getting a chatbot is inevitable. So... <laughs> you better start structuring your data and the tool will come. That's another genius conclusion. Getting a chatbot is inevitable, so you might as well start now. Thank you so much to both of you. That was absolutely delightful. And for once on CaliCube Tuesday's WordLift monthly special, we actually know what's coming next month. So the next Tuesday, which is going to be in April, is Jerry White, Emilia which I can't say. I've only ever read it, so I don't know how to say it. SEO in the metaverse, that's going to be phenomenally interesting. So please do join us next month for that WordLift's monthly special. Uh, thank you again, Theodora and Bea. Thank you, Anton, behind the scenes in Kiev. Um, stand with Ukraine, stay strong, um, stay safe, Anton. We love you. 
Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I'll sing the song. A quick goodbye to end the show. Thank you, Teodora and BR. That didn't scan. Great. Cali Cube. <laughs> <laughs>